to investigate. He has established, he's establishing a commission of inquiry, an independent in, uh, commission of inquiry, to ensure that uh, they look into the radical causes of the situation in Farababanta. Um, again, he has he's also, also indicated, informed the public that nobody gave the command for the use of arms, you know, life bullets. We, as a government, under his leadership of Adam Obaro, Excellency Adam Obaro, know that we are a signatory to many conventions, like the protocol, the African Union protocol, which is saying silencing the guns by year 2020. We are a signatory. We are a signatory to the Universal Declaration of Human, human Rights. The Commission, African Commission on Human Rights, Human and People's Rights, is seated in the Gambia. The People's Commission is seated in the Gambia. And this is an indication. We already see how the things that how things are moving. We are moving from within one and a half year. We have been able to have a development plan, four-year development plan covering 2018 to 2021. We have launched the plan. We have tabled it, and we have you have seen the resources that we have uh, been able to garner from the pledges we have been able to get on the national development plan. And the pillar of that is the rule of law, the respect for human rights, the fundamental freedom of everybody. And being the father of the nation, he is not going to tolerate. He has said it, and I am echoing it, that neither him nor his government, any member of his government, is going to condone with uh, violence, any form of violence. Mr. Bar we, Madam Vice President, um, you, you've made mention of the fact that these uh, people who acted, acted not with the orders of the police IGP and also the orders of the interior minister, that in someone's language would be rogue elements. They are acting alone. If they are acting alone, shouldn't there be an arrest since yesterday? Um, we are leaving that to the, to the investigation. The, if we tell you what the, we cannot anticipate what the Commission of Enquiry is going to do, then we are going to do a dilute, or we will, be, we will not be neutral. It is important for them to look into the radical causes of this, look at the circumstances leading to the deaths and the casualties, and the conflict in the area. Because it is not only to arrest, but we want to stabilize the country. We want to stabilize Faraba. We want Faraba to become a, a, a very social, cohesive uh, community, like other, other communities. So that is why fundamentally we are going to look at the radical causes. That is, what is the root cause of these issues that we are seeing more and more there. But along the way also, His Excellency and his government have said that he is not going to tolerate violence. And for us, our democracy, there is a misconception of democracy. Now you see people doing everything, taking the law in their own hands. That's not democracy. Democracy is the respect for the rule of law, respect for the human rights. Where your rights stops, that's where the other person's rights begins. So we all have to know that this democracy that we have, we have to all nurture it. Media, General Assembly, National Assembly, the government. And today what has happened is historic. The National Assembly convened a meeting with the executive, we came to answer to them because we are accountable to them. Just as our permanent secretaries and other people who are working with us in our institutions are accountable to us. We have convened them and they made it very, very clear. It was a family talk. We discussed the issue and the resolution is how do we move as a nation, together as a nation. Taking cue of our holy books, that's the Holy Quran, the Holy Bible, and also taking, taking a, a cue of our national assembly, a national anthem, you know, the diversity. We are one people, and we are working for the common good. And you all have a role to play by giving the right messages, educating our people about what democracy is, and trying as much as possible to nurture this, this democracy that you and him and her and others fought for. We need to safeguard this democracy. So because everybody is seeing Gambia today as a model, we should not lose that. Uh, Your Excellency, when are we expecting uh, results from the Commission of uh, Inquiry? His Excellency will make a statement on that.
He is going to, he is going to, we, of course, in everything, he, it is not going to be like the past. When we say we are going to, government is going to investigate and sometimes it just dies like that. This is expeditious investigation and which will be done as soon as possible and the results will be shared by the public. Madam Vice, Madam Madam Vice, Vice President, President, the Faraba issue has been around for some time. Don't you think, and I'm sure the government was aware that there was a problem in Faraba, but the government went to sleep and didn't do anything. Is it correct to say that the government is only now being reactionary, not being proactive? Uh, that is your perception and that's your understanding. For eight months, we have been engaging both the community, the contractor, and the local authorities. It has escalated to this point. It's not because we, for eight good months, the Honorable Minister of Energy and Petroleum is here, the Honorable Minister of Interior is here, the Honorable of, uh, Minister of Lands and Local Government is here, the, the Permanent Secretaries are here. I'm here in my humble, hum, in my humble person um, just to address the issues. But we have learned, in every situation you have lessons learned and best practices. The lessons that we are learning coming from different areas, and even the National Assembly also, through their special committee, select, select committee and, and environment, also engage them. They engage them, and uh, they have been engaging them in dialogue in a very peaceful way. So we are now seeing something that is historic. Government, for how many years, where have you seen government? and the legislature working in this way. Mm. We all came out happy. We all came back thanking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for bringing us together and for speaking one voice and for having one, one's interest. Yeah, I'll give it to the woman now. Yes, after We can see that since the new government, uh, this is not the first time um, officers are using life bullet on people. Well, such classes, because in Kanilai, this, uh, it happens in Kanilai, the golden lake in Gunjur, the Sanyang one and the cemetery at uh, the Manjago cemetery and now Faraba. What next for the Gambian people? They did not use live bullets in uh, in, in, in the Manjago incident, my daughter. But, but in such, but in such. Uh, um, let me, you ask, you ask me a question. I will listen to you, so you have to listen Sorry. to me, my daughter. Um, all these incidents that are happening, we have to know the background from which we are coming from. 22 years, people were arrested arbitrarily. People were castigated as arbitrarily. Today, before they arrest you, even if they arrest you, you they detain you, it cannot be beyond 72 hours. But we cannot have, we have changed as a people, we have changed as a system of government, but our mentalities also have to change. And this is at the, every level. We have to have understanding. The Manjago, uh, community, we engaged them and finally we resolved it amicably. The doctors were there, we engaged them. We are ready, we are a government that is accountable to the people. We are here to serve the people, not the people serving us. So wherever you hear crisis, if we don't hear it, let us know and then we will be there to, to, to resolve it amicably. Yes, for the Faraba is unfortunate. We all, we sympathize with the loss of lives because every, every life is important. Do we know what those people were going to be if they were left alive? So we will deal with it um, in a very judicious way, and, but we are not going to, the executive, His Excellency is not going to interfere. His government is a reform agenda, it's a democratic government where the execution, there is distinct, distinction between the executive, the legislature, and the judiciary. So everybody, all these institutions have to be strengthened work together in order to move this country beyond. And of course, we cannot leave you behind. Do you think the leaders are running away from responsibility? Do you of the importance of the National Assembly by executing their function and they have engaged the people of Faraba, which I was part of the committee that went there. And the instruction given to the National Assembly committee was that let all mining be stalled, stop until decision came from the National Assembly. Mm -hmm. Then where did uh, the man and the PIU get the authority to go and protect the people at uh, the mining place? Why did military? Because they tell, let them withdraw all the paramilitary from there. That was the order from the National Assembly. And the mining should be stopped. Then who gave the order for the man to continue uh, mining and the no, no, but Nobody gave him any order. Then you them the nobody, nobody gave them any order. We, we, during the 22 years, 
you see somebody doing something, you ask them, it's a, a, what do they tell you? Uh, executive order. But today is no executive order. His Excellency could have taken a decision unilaterally, but he called us. He discussed with us. He asked for us for our opinion. And when, I, when he, was, he was supposed to come here, but he went to the hospital to visit the casualties, and of course, including those who have lost their lives. So, because we cannot all, the two of us cannot be uh, in a place at the same time. If I'm here, he is somewhere else. And when I'm here, I'm there representing him with the full authority and powers invested on me. Ma, for many Gambians, uh, they believe the president will have given a statement, a public statement after this incident. What is keeping the president silence when such happened? He is not silent. He is working. This is a president that doesn't talk, 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 talk and not do anything. This is a pro president who is action-oriented. He is result-oriented. He said politics is over. Now what, is, what we need is to work. And working, you cannot work and talk. So what he, there is a system in place. What he did was, number one, he cannot absorb. It was only in the past that you have the executive using the powers of other institutions. You have the police. So the interior IG, IGP, made a press uh, release yesterday. The Honorable Minister made a press statement. His Excellency, his office made a press release, which everybody had over Radio Gambia and uh, GRTS. So what next is when we report back today, then that he will have an informed decision and he will talk to the nation. And he was so shaken and shattered yesterday by what happened that I don't think he would, it would have been a, a proper day for him to face the nation. He is a man, but in his heart of hearts, I think he is crying. And he is really, really sad about what has happened. And pray, praise that that never happens anymore. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you and God bless you. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you.